Pónganse listos para el detective de las pistolas de aire. Today, we're going to take the mystery out of the Gamel Hornet and Maxim. Before we get started, please hit that little subscribe button down below if you haven't already. In addition to that, hit the little bell and you'll be notified every time we come out with a new video, which we try to have one every week for you. Uh, in addition to that, we'd love your feedback, even a, just a simple thumbs up. We always like those. Those are great to have. So now, business on hand. Our Gamma Hornet Maxim. This one here is in uh, .177 caliber, 17 caliber. It's uh, quite a little package. You get the um, cat trigger, the custom action trigger, which is phenomenal. And uh, that can be adjusted and out of the box can be adjusted down to about 3.2 pounds. But I'll cover some other information on that uh, later. It comes with a recoil reducing rail. I'm not a big fan of it because I've lost a few scopes. Not on this model gun because this, this gun does not have a whole lot of recoil. The scope that you see here, it did not come with that. It actually comes with this 3 to 9 by 40. It, now this has a this is a non-adjusted uh, objective. In, a, uh, in other words, the um, you can't adjust the uh, objective on it at all. It's fixed, but it is a 3 by 9 scope. And honestly, these are okay if you're shooting anything probably beyond 20 yards. If you want to shoot anything under that. Um, I would suggest an adjustable objective type scope. But anyway, it does come with that little scope. In addition, oh, this gun does not come with these Picatinny rails. I added these Picatinny rails along with the split bipods. And ironically, I know I've gotten some uh, feedback from some of you that are really interested in these, and I'm trying to work on that right now. I've got, um, I'm trying to locate the uh, split bipods and the Picatinny rails, and I want to try to package something up for you guys, make you a good deal. For those of you, who, for those of you who are interested, because it really is a nice stabilizing factor when you're shooting the gun off of these. Anyway, back to this. They're claiming this gun gets 1,300 feet per second with a 177 caliber, and you know that's an alloy pellet. And uh, I know using lighter pellets, yeah, this thing will definitely break the sound barrier. Um, I prefer to use a little heavier pellet in this because I've tested quite a few. And uh, in fact, take a look at all these pellets I've used. Yeah, to go through and find the right pellet. This one seems to work better on a heavier pellet, so we're going to go ahead and chrono that, and then we'll test that one for accuracy, and uh, we'll go from there. But the gun itself weighs under six pounds, and um, it has its own um, whisper technology, which is actually very much backyard friendly. It's very quiet. So here's your basic package, and. Uh, Let's see how well it performs. So hang on and we'll move on to the next section. We have our Gamo Hornet Maxim here. It's a .177 caliber, again. And we're going to see what type of uh, true velocity we get out of it. Gamo claims 1,300 feet per second. You know that's going to be with an alloy pellet. And we probably could put a real lightweight pellet in here. But I'm going to shoot the pellets that are actually the most accurate in this gun. And those are the JSB. 10.34 grain lead pellet, so they're much heavier pellet if you think about it. Um, we're going to do five shots over the chronograph, and uh, we'll see to what type of true velocity we get. Because it's all about the foot pounds of energy, and I'll emphasize that a little bit later. All right. So let's see what we get. Absolutely nothing. Didn't read a. Didn't read anything on that one. Let's try this. Okay, 797. That's shot number one. Shot number two. 796. Shot number three. 796 again. Wow, our standard deviation is really good on this round. Okay, shot number four. 296 again. The standard deviation on this gun is unbelievable. And when we're talking about that, we're talking about the variation between velocities each time you fire the gun. 
and 787. So out of nowhere, it goes and throws this off here. So you see it's the high 700s here. And uh, you can see what the average is here. Not too bad. Let's move on, and I'm going to show you how accurate this gun is. Okay, we've got our um, Gamma Hornet Maxim. We're going to see what type of accuracy we get. We're shooting about 20 yards out. I'm going to shoot five shots, and I'm actually going to shoot the 10.34 grain uh, JSBs, they seem to be the most accurate. You know, anytime you're shooting a 177 caliber, um, the velocity is usually pretty high because you're shooting such a light pellet. So what you want to do is you get that little heavier pellet, and it actually slows down the velocity, but uh, you get a little better accuracy out of it. So let's see what we do. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna shoot five shots. Of course, I always shoot better off camera than I do on camera, so we'll see what we got here. Let's see. There's one. And here's number two. And this trigger adjusted this way is perfect for target practice. There's two. Remember, we're going for grouping on this. We're going for grouping. We're going to see how close together we can get these pellets all aiming in the same spot. So far, so good. Let's see. All right, and let's do one more. Always seem to get a flyer. That was probably me. Let's double check. Let me let me shoot one more. I think I rushed that one a little bit. Let's see if we can get this one in the red with the others. If we do, we won't count that other one. Because in all fairness to the gun. That's more like it. Alright. So those are the five shots that we're gonna count. Anyway, so here's your gamo, your Hornet Maxim. Uh, not bad, pretty accurate gun, but let's move on to the next um, section. All right, we're here with our Gamo Maxim Hornet. We're going to see what type of uh, trigger weight we have. Now keep in mind, I upgraded the um, trigger screw in here with the uh, that 2.5 millimeter screw. So let's see what type of weight we've got on this trigger. one pound 2.6 ounces so you can see you can actually dial these triggers in pretty doggone light and that's why i said you're going to do that at your own risk because uh, the last thing you want to do is have a hair trigger on these things well let's move on to the next section all right what review would be complete without doing a little plinking so we're going to go ahead and shoot our uh, gamma our hornet maxim from about 40 yards let me show you about where we're shooting from so you can just kind of get a feel for it so as we're zooming in up on the target, you can see the little metal targets there that we're actually going to shoot. So we come all the way back here. And uh, what we're going to shoot, we're going to shoot the JSB Exacts. They're a 10.34 grain pellet. I've got five little targets up there. Let's see if we can knock those five down. We do have a little bit of wind going on, so that could be a little bit of a factor. So let's see what we got. Well, there's one. That's the pipe. And let's go for number two here. Oh, yeah. You can see for uh, 17 caliber shooting a 10 grain pellet, um, we have some decent foot pounds of energy there. Let's go for the uh, shotgun shell in the middle of the two. I'm afraid if I hit one of the others, the lead fragments might knock it off. So let's see if we can hit that. Yeah, I got a good breeze going on right now. 
Yeah. That was a miss on my part. But I can really feel that wind coming up. So let's try this again. Okay. Let's go back to the shotgun shell. Okay. That was just kind of a nick. But hey, we got it. Okay, remember we're 40 yards out, and we got a wind going right now. There we go. And I think the last one should be a piece of cake. We could probably do this one with our eyes closed. But, you know, if you happen to be using this for, you know, some pest control, something like that, you could even actually do some small hunting with this. You see what type of accuracy you get and foot-pounds of energy. So that's our Gamo uh, Hornet um, Maxim. So not bad. That's 40 yards out and you saw how small those targets were. Let's move on to our next section. All right, now for our conclusion on our Gamo Hornet Maxim .177 caliber. Uh, you saw it actually performed quite well. Uh, the positives on this thing, the cat trigger. You saw what happened with when I uh, put in the uh, M 2.5 by 45 with 10 millimeter screw. I do that with all these cat triggers. You just got to be very careful how you adjust it. But it went from a little over a three pound trigger to under a two pound trigger. In fact, it, I think it was 1.26 ounces. I think when we when we uh, tested it. So then again, you know, get that screw. But if you're not comfortable with working on these air guns, if you're not a professional, I wouldn't mess with it. A three pound trigger is a fantastic trigger triggered just the way it is. Um, for target practice, that's what I use this gun for. The lighter trigger is appropriate for that type of thing. For hunting, it would never be. You'd always want a little bit heavier trigger. Because you can turn this into a hair trigger. It could be very dangerous. So my suggestion to you is to leave it alone, unless you're really comfortable and you want to do it at your own risk. Anyway, so the trigger's fantastic, the cap trigger on this. Um, I also, I really like the Whisper technology on this. It's, it's very quiet backyard friendly. I like the gas piston in this gun. It's very smooth. There's not a whole lot of recoil on it. I don't like the scope that it comes with. It would be nice if they gave you an adjustable objective scope. This is not the greatest scope. I mean, it's, it's all right. You can get by with it, believe me, but eventually you would want to upgrade to some type of... Well, Gamo is one of the most famous manufacturers for overstating feet per second. It's really tough to achieve any of their feet per seconds that they're claiming. Uh, you got to use an alloy pellet. Sometimes you got to put a little oil on them or what have you so it'll diesel in the gun and maybe you'll get that type of velocity. But realistically, um, this gun's a little bit on the pellet picky side. Overall, this is actually a nice package. Once again, I'll tell you, it did not come with the Picatinny rails. That's something I like to do. And as I've mentioned before, the reason I like them so much is because anytime you're shooting a um, spring piston or gas piston gun, when you cock the, the gun, and I've explained this to you before, the piston is cocked and it comes back and it catches on the sear in the back of the gun here. When you then pull the trigger, it releases the piston, which goes forward into the chamber and creates um, air pressure in here and forces the pellet out of the barrel. Well, what happens is this piston comes crashing forward, creating that air pressure as the pellet's traveling out of the barrel. But the piston actually makes contact with the end of the cylinder before that pellet is out of the barrel. So it's so important to hold this shot steady through the entire recoil process because you want to make sure that pellet is online. It's not like uh, when you're firing a rim fire or center fire cartridge. When you fire that, the velocity is so high that bullet is out of the barrel before you can even flinch. Different with these. So my luck has been um, to get the best performances with the bipods. And like I said, that's pretty much what I do is target, shoot, and plink. So I enjoy that type of thing. So like I said before, those of you who are interested in these, and I know you, there's quite a few of you that mentioned, I'm trying to set something up for you guys so you can get those hopefully here in the near future. But uh, overall, it, it's it's a fun gun. It's a fun gun. Um, other than it being a little pellet picky, once you dial in the right pellet for it, um, it's it's easy to shoot. It's a, easy to cock. I'm telling you, this seems like it's 30 pounds, if not a little bit less than your cock, cocking effort. Um, this recoil reducing rail, I'm not a big believer in it. I don't think it's 
I don't think it does what it's supposed to do. Because on the more powerful ones, I have lost a couple of scopes with the recoil reducing rail. So, other than that, it's a good package. This retails for right around, I think it's $160, really close to that. Plus, you can get it on sale. So, price wise, when you get it for that price with a nice trigger, um, the whole gun weighs under six pounds, which is kind of nice. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good little package. So actually what I'm going to give it, because it is a little bit pellet picky, I'm going to give it uh, three and three quarter stars. What do you think of that? Three and three quarter stars. That's going to be a, a new rating on this one. So three and three quarter stars. Anyway, we appreciate you tuning in for another episode of the Airgun Detectives. If you haven't uh, subscribed, please hit the subscribe button there down below. Um, in addition to that, um, you want to be notified, hit the little bell. And other than that, we'd love your comments and your feedback. So, until next time, tune in to Airgun Detectives, where we take the mystery out of the airgun.